1918, the world was struck by one of the largest epidemics of the 20th century. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the H1N1 virus, also known as the Spanish flu, killed about 675,000 people in the United States and an estimated 50 million across the globe. For a virus with such a large impact on the world, there is still much debate of its origins. It is generally accepted that the origins of the flu are North American, beginning in Alaska. Although he acknowledges this, scholar Jeffrey K. Taubenberger points out that there have been reportings of the influenza appearing on multiple continents at the same time. This includes North America, Europe, and Asia. Scholar Mark Osborne Humphreys more specifically notes that the spread could have occurred in Chinese and European laborers according to the Chinese and European origin theories. Because of such theories, we are still not sure of its origins. But let us rewind. You may have noticed that I called the virus the Spanish flu. If its origins are in North America, why would it be named after Spain? Well, if we unveil the curtain, we can see that in 1918, the influenza had many names. According to Kenneth C. Davis's book, More Deadly Than War, the Germans called it the Russian Pest. The Russians, the Chinese flu. The Japanese, wrestler's fever. South Africans, white man's slash black's disease. Soldiers of World War I, three days fever, and Flanders fever. Perhaps what contributed to this blame game of naming conventions was xenophobia. Dr. Trevor Hopp suggests in an article of his that associating diseases with foreigners and immigrants is often a stratagem used in public health history and the media to shift blame and ensure domestic safety. Another contribution to the naming conventions is media coverage and the Great War. There was heavy censorship of the media in Europe since many of the countries had been in the war since 1914. With the media censored for so long, many people also became afraid to speak out in fear of breaking the law. However, Spain was a neutral country at the time, being one of the first to report in the sickness. They themselves called it the Soldier of Naples, after a popular song at the time. Other countries started pointing fingers at Spain, and the Spanish people protested due to the false stigmatization. However, their voices were drowned in fear, and the name stayed afloat. The rags to riches story of the Molly Brown House Museum is truly exemplified by the first and second owners of this magnificent Denver home. Isaac and Mary Large gained their wealth through investments in Colorado's silver mining industry. Their substantial wealth allowed them to hire George W. Clayton to build their home in the prestigious Capitol Hill neighborhood. But for unknown reasons, William A. Lang replaced Clayton and designed and constructed the home for the Large family. Lang created 1340 Pennsylvania Avenue with his signature eclectic style, weaving Queen Anne and Richardsonian Romanesque architecture into the home. The rough cut stone used on the outside of the home is quintessential of Richardsonian Romanesque architecture. The home was one of the first in Denver to include electricity, forced air heating, a hand crank telephone, and most importantly, indoor plumbing with both hot and cold water. 
This tells us more about how well off the large family was at the time, since they were able to afford these luxurious amenities. On the first floor is one of two bathrooms. Family and guests would have had access to this restroom. It is also possible that service and delivery men, such as the milkman, would have also been able to use this restroom as it was located on the first floor and was easily accessible to both the front and back of the home. As we zoom in on the second floor, we can barely make out the restroom on the original floor plans. The bathroom was located near the back staircases and would have included a toilet, bathtub, and sink. This bathroom would have solely been used by the family. The floor plans for the third floor have yet to be found. However, it is believed that this is where the servants' quarters were located, and the plumbing suggests that there was only a sink on this floor. There have been speculation by historians that there may have been a bathroom in the basement which would have been used by servants and staff. However, this has not been confirmed through research, which leads us to believe the servants used chamber pots instead of a running toilet. In 1893, the U.S. repealed the Sherman Silver Purchase Act, which left many in the silver mining industry in financial hardship. Isaac and Mary were negatively impacted and had to sell their home due to the silver crash. James Joseph, also known as JJ, and Margaret Brown purchased the home in 1894, only four years after its construction from the large family. JJ ended up transferring the title of the house to Margaret in 1898 due to health issues to ensure that the home would stay within the family. The Browns owned the home until 1932 when Margaret died. During their ownership, the Browns made several updates, including a five foot tall stone retaining wall with sandstone columns in the front of the property, which matched the retaining wall of their neighbors. They replaced the porch banisters with sandstone columns, and they also replaced the wooden shingle roof with a fireproof roof to include French tiles. The back of the house saw many updates as well. They combined the two back porches into one and enclosed it with a new veranda built in brick. They also expanded the carriage house, which would eventually house automobiles instead of horses. Inside the home, the Browns installed radiant heating and expanded the front stairwell from the second floor to the third. After one of her trips abroad, Margaret had the lion statues added to the front of the home, which, were, which is where the name Lion's House comes from. The early 1900s brought two deadly events. World War I started in 1914, but the U.S. would not join the war until 1917. A year later, the 1918 flu would make its way around the globe, killing 675,000 Americans and around 50 million people worldwide. During this time, the Browns did not reside in Denver, as they were off fighting and volunteering for the war. They rented the home to the Kaiser family in 1918. Cornelia Kaiser, who lived in the home during this time with her parents, recalls there being a third bathroom located in JJ's room, where the closet was located in the original floor plans. It's unclear whether the Browns used that restroom while they lived there before 1910, or if they added it after 1910 for their renters. Regardless, the home could serve as a model used by health officials who were struggling to find medicine to combat the flu during the time. The tactics of light, air, openness, and sanitation were the only defense known to help curb the spread of the disease. The home's three porches, large windows, and two restrooms would have served as great examples for how design can be used to combat illness. In 1932, Margaret passed away. Her children sold the home at the height of the Great Depression, and the house saw drastic changes as it was converted from a family home into a, a boarding home first for men and then later leased to the city as a home for the girls. Twelve unique rooms were created out of the original bedrooms. The floor plans have not been located, but it is reasonable to believe the second and third floor would have been converted to create this number of bedrooms. Art Liesenring, the final private citizen to own the home, was concerned about urbanization happening in the neighborhood. Additionally, he wanted to immortalize the deceased Margaret Brown, who was gaining fame from the stage and film due to her remarkable story of surviving the Titanic. He led a group of citizens and petitioned the governor's wife, Anne Love, to help restore the home. 
Due to the group's effort, Historic Denver purchased the home in 1970, and over the last 50 years, the organization has worked with specialists to restore the home to its original Victorian form.